Hey everybody, Stephanie, The Unbroken Truth. Uh, last week we talked about New York and every wonderful little thing that happened inside me during that trip. Um, we also kind of ended on a note talking about trauma bonds. Now, I think that most of the people who listen to this show, follow me, any of that kind of stuff by now, you probably have a pretty good idea of what trauma bonds actually are. Um, basically it's when an abuser uses a system of rewards after abuse to keep you happy and to keep you coming back. Uh, let's see here. I actually have, I'm going to take just a second here. I'm going to pull up, I actually have the, the real definition for those who would like to get, you know, really into it. Trauma bonding occurs as the result of ongoing cycles of abuse in which the intermittent reinforcement of reward and punishment creates powerful emotional bonds that are resistant to change. So basically, the issue is that these, these thought patterns get into us and they create a place for us to be manipulated in the future because of the system of rewards after abuse that we are conditioned to receive. Uh, and that can, that can affect us in the future in so many different ways. And it not only affects our friendships, our relationships and things like that, but it can also affect your success in the future in business. Today I have brought on a friend of mine, uh, Miss Kristen A. Say hello, Kristen A. Hi. Hi. This is one of my best friends. Um, she has probably about as much experience in this department as I do. Um, Kristen, have you have you ever experienced a trauma bond situation? Yes, I, I experienced a good whopping nine years with someone that uh, due to mental illness and other things. His life trauma, in turn, it came back on me. Yeah, uh, it, I kind of messed up that one. Absolutely. Now, I know we might have some issues with sound. I'm really hoping that I'm catching everything that she is saying. Um, so, yes, I, I am. I'm sure that the the mental disorders that he was dealing with definitely caused quite a bit of a rift and there was a lot of things that you, I know for sure that you had to take care of with him uh, during those times to keep him really just stable. Uh, do you feel like the mental disorders that he was dealing with caused you to put up with more abusive behavior than you should have? Um, yes, I do believe it was that and the fact that I didn't want my children to be raised in a broken home because I knew how it felt. It, both of those affect tremendously. And the whole social expectations of, oh, well, once you're married, you're not supposed to get divorced mentality that I was raised in kind of had me there as well. Like, yeah, you were raised in a very Christian household, weren't you? Um, yes. Yes and no. I was raised in Christian in my uh, for most of my childhood. The um, second half of my childhood, I was the younger years was more. They didn't, but they did. They weren't actually going to church, but they were. They would talk about it and God and the rules and how things were supposed to be. So, like that. so basically, they would use religion to dictate the way the behavior in the home was supposed to be. Um, between the Christian's idea of expectations and the expectations of old, as what we would call old school, the, the groomer type mentality, is that is that how we're going to we're going uh, to say it? We'll just say um, the southern way of life. <laughs> Yeah, the southern way of life, uh, women were expected to be a certain way, and that's how I was raised, and so that's what I, I tried. 
Absolutely. I, um, of course, I did grow up in the South. Uh, many of the, the viewers already know plenty about that. Um, and it is definitely a huge part of our culture here um, that, you know, men are treated a certain way and women are treated a certain way and that you show respect at all times. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. It's just that's right. your husband, that's your your father, whatever. Those those people are right at all times, and that's the people that you're supposed to show ultimate respect to. Uh, do you believe that growing up this way caused your relationship to have more of those trials? Um, yes. Sorry, multitasking. My childhood was not a positive dad influence. My, um, he, my dad was verbally, mentally, and emotionally abusive and borderline physically abusive. And still to this day, it has some of the same tendencies. So, yeah. Um, guys, does that make sense? I didn't catch the last part of what you said. What was that? Guys are mean. Oh, <laughs> guys are mean. Um, okay. Not all guys are mean. I will, I will, I will preface that, uh, you know, over half of our fan base is male. No, no, my, my, I love, I love my boyfriend. But no, I, I do get what, I do get what you're saying with it. You know, there is a lot of, um, a lot of toxic masculinity in the South. Um, and I know for me, for sure, growing up that way, um, I didn't grow up in a super religious home, but I did grow up in a spiritual home. Um, so we, we accepted a lot more, I suppose. Um, and I was never like, they never used the Bible or God as a, a tool of fear. Um, they, my father used his hands as a tool of fear instead. Um, Either way, none of it is good. It's all the same thing. It's all causing you to have that fear and them being the person who makes you feel better afterwards in which now every time they make you feel bad, you're expecting them to make you feel better. Uh, it keeps you coming back to them for that reward. Um, now, I know in my relationships, that's been something that has occurred a lot. I know in Christine's relationship, that is something that has occurred a lot where we allowed a lot of things that we wouldn't have allowed, or we just put it to the side, didn't worry about it, you know, pick your battles yeah. kind of thing. Um, do you think that if you would have not had those, those types of trauma bonding moments as a kid that you would have been less likely to have to, to deal with that as an adult in your relationships? If I would have not dealt with the type of parenting that I dealt with, I truly believe I'd be a completely different person and I would have made a lot better decisions when it came to relationships. You know, that's something that I hear a lot. Um, the truth is that we hope and we always, you know, look at the what ifs as you know, you're always the character, the main character in the book, you know, you're, you're going to overcome, you would have been better, you would have done better. Um, and I like to believe that that is true because I think that that's what we're trying to work towards is to raise our children and to change things in ways that make them less susceptible to these situations. Um, and I, you know what, I'm going to give it out to, uh, Gen, is it, is it Gen Z? Is that what they're, they're called the Zoomers, whatever. I'm going to give it to them. You guys are, you guys are pretty resilient. You're pretty strong. You're pretty awesome. Um, I'm loving some of the stuff that I'm seeing you put out where you're just like, you know what? My, my people, my family doesn't accept me, whatever, any of this kind of stuff. And you're just like rolling with it. You're like, that's okay. I'm going to be all right. Shout out. Wait, Gen Z, Gen Z is the one that are after millennials? Yeah, that's like, okay. So okay, that was the other thing I was going to mention. Like they finally gave, they finally gave us, like me and you, a name. We're Gen Y. Are we? Okay, yeah, whatever. Consider Gen Y. I just recently found this out. Whatever. Eighty four in the house. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I'm just saying that, but these are the kids that like they're being raised by us, you know. So like the things that we were trying to make change, 
Like I see it working. I see these things happening and these changes happening. Like my kids in the room with me, you know, hearing all of this stuff that we're talking about because it's important for my child to hear these things and for it to be a okay topic to talk about, you know? Hey, if you get into a situation with somebody where something really drastic happens, you know, a building starts crashing around you and you guys survive it together, that does not mean that you owe the rest of your life to that person making them happy. Absolutely. So, but we get caught in that and we get caught in these places where we really expect from ourselves to repay that. Um, empaths are really bad about that because we feel all of this stuff off of people. Um, if you don't know what an empath is, I'm so sorry. You're gonna have to Google that for a minute. Um, don't fall down the rabbit hole. I actually do fall down the rabbit no, hole. Don't. It's really fun. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah actually, you might, really you might enjoy that. Um, so I guess, you know, to kind of move forward with it, we all know trauma bonds are bad. We all know that people can use situations to manipulate us. So right. I want to move forward. I want everybody has a tendency. That's right. I want to move forward though. What sure. do we do to stop those things from happening? How do we recognize it as it's happening? How do we look at what we're doing and say, you know what? I'm responding to my subconscious, to the voice of my mother, to the voice of my father that's in my head. I'm I'm responding to that and not to my true self. What do you do to try to stop in those moments and recognize those things. How, what triggers you to, to notice that you're doing that? That's, that's the word I was waiting for you to say, triggers. It's learning your triggers. It's becoming aware of, one, your past traumas so you can realize that they're actually traumas. Uh, then recognizing them and saying, if you have to say it out loud or write it down, Oh my gosh. And okay. I, I hate to, I hate to stop you right there, but realizing, realizing that it was a trauma is the biggest thing because I, okay. So <laughs> another little you know, side I, thing. I, I walked with you through some of this stuff, so go ahead. Oh, no, 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 not, not me. Okay. There's, there's a lot of people who follow us who are older women who lived just to code and were, were beautiful, perfect housewives who have started to realize that some of the things that they experienced were abusive. And that just the, the realization of that has even caused some trauma. So I just wanted to stop for a second and, you know, kind of really touch on that point that that's why we're talking about this because many people don't even realize that they've had any of that trauma to begin with. So that's why this is important to talk about and to just have out in the open with your friends so that when you're talking about situations, you can get that feedback from them and not be ashamed of it. I'm sorry, you were saying. No, you're great. <laughs> no, you're great. You just got to a even better point. Um, another thing that helped me those last four years have been rough between you and my other best friend have and my boyfriend now has helped me realize a lot of things and helped me grow because that awakening that day, that breaking point for me when the relationship ended was extremely traumatic. And moving and growing from that, I've had to <clears throat> realize and find my triggers and get to a point where I could start healing because for a long time it was a it was a horrible mess. Know, it, was, it was bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it was bad for a while. I do remember that. That, was, that first year, that first year was rough, and my kids walked right there with me and saw every ounce of my mess. You remember the first year after my divorce, right? I mean... Um, you were kind of living in my house. Yeah, like, I started doing, like, old school stuff, man. I was, like, cr I was crashing on couches. I was, like, trying to nail down, but... Um, my year after my divorce was like right after the world exploded too for me. So, so I think that for me, every time I found myself answering too fast, I started trying to review the things that I had answered. Um, and that's helped me a lot to like learn to say like, I'll get back to you or maybe, or we'll see about that next week. 
any of those kind of things instead of just making those immediate decisions because a lot of times those immediate decisions are people pleasing decisions uh, yeah. so I, I think one of the biggest things that uh, me and you have had an had a thing with uh, in the past was that you especially dealt with a people pleasing issue I've always been a little bit more of a, a smart ass and had a little bit more like, you know, temper and stuff. But um, you were very definitely a, a person who wanted to help fix things all the time. Uh, do, you, do you see how that can be a result of all of the traumas that you've dealt with before? And why do you think that that makes things that way? just properly okay so my compliant mentality definitely came from the um aggressive personality of my father for one uh but yes it affected everything all i could do all i all i wanted to do was help people make them happy it made me happy to make them happy because i thought that i just thought that's what it was supposed to be and how it was supposed to be and i was just supposed to make everybody happy and I was supposed to say yes to everything. I was the yes person. And that I find now is not a good idea. Um, that is having absolutely no boundaries for your personal health, mental, um, everything. It just, it, without those boundaries, it, and being completely a compliant person is very, very um, hard and it sucks. It really sucks. Don't do that. It does. Um, I I have decided to make a life of being non-compliant. <laughs> um, yeah, relationships get a little bit more uh, interesting when you're like, yeah, no, I can't do that. Yeah, my relationships have always been a bit spicy. <laughs> No, my my guy now is actually pretty uh great about being able to feel boundaries on things and be like, you know, I'm not going to push this one. So, you know. Oh, yeah. That's a whole other subject that we could talk about. Learning your boundaries. Uh, yeah, that's definitely. Fun. Oh, no, that one that one will come up in the future, I'm very sure. Um, so, you know, we've, we've kind of touched on how, how this all kind of goes. I don't want to drag on too far about it you know it it makes sense to most people they already kind of understand it and things now we've talked about why it's important to recognize it within ourselves yeah. I want to bring another thought into the forefront why it's important to recognize it in other people now you have to be careful with this and please keep in mind I am in no way a professional I am not a therapist psychologist no, none of that stuff Okay, just someone who's lived through a lot of these um, and who deals with a lot of people because a lot of people come to me about these situations. Imagine it's your daughter. Yeah. Imagine it's your best friend, someone that you love right. and you're watching them and you know that this person has gone through something traumatic with their significant other and they, they are giving everything to this person but you're watching them lose their personal interests. You know, your your friend doesn't doesn't go bowling anymore, or doesn't paint anymore, or doesn't create anymore. Whatever they whatever it was that they enjoyed doing, their time is so spent fulfilling the needs of the other person that they're ignoring themselves. I think it's important to recognize those times with your family. Why, why, why are you going to talk about me like? Ah, oh, I'm not talking about just. <laughs> she says, "Why are you calling me out?" I think I think I'm calling myself out a little bit. I am. I'm calling out. I am calling out my mother. I'm calling out my sister. I am calling out my other sister. I'm calling us all out. All right, that's what we do here. We call, I'm calling you bitches out. <laughs> because. Time, because that's what we do that's what they all do that's what we all do when we've been through these situations I, I still have not been able to get my blocks to lift 
because, well, you know, but they don't. I write, I create, I like craft, I make things, cut t-shirts, I'm a, an artist, I draw, things like that. These are all things I still haven't gotten back because of yeah. the problem. Yeah, I, I'm still mad that you're not made, you still haven't made my skirt. This girl makes clothes, okay? And if you know anything about me, I have, oh, I lost my back. If you know anything about me, I have multiple closets and dressers and all these things, and I pretty much wear outfits like twice, unless I really love it, and then I wear it all the time. But she, she still owes me a skirt, so. Like, what, you want a bohemian? Yeah, my little jean skirt with the, the ruffle things that you promised you'd make me. We're not talking about that on the show. <laughs> so that that's the point, though. That really is the point, though, is that... Sorry. Random noises. So <laughs> we want to be able to recognize those things in people. We also want to be able to tactfully bring them up. And that part's not easy either. How would you bring it up to a friend if you noticed that they were going through something like that? All right, so there's a couple different levels of this. With the friend, the friend is, well, me lately. Before, I wouldn't bring it up. I'd just watch it happen and it's okay. You're going to be all right. You're great. Whatever. Now I try to say, okay, well, you just sent me a trigger signal. Let's, I'm going to use you for example. That's just the best way I can. Go for it, <laughs> yeah. A, um, you're having one of those situations, and for me and you being best friends, and we all know about our best friends, you can say a word, a single word, and I would know. And then that's where I come about and say, okay, why did you say that? Okay, like, give me a further example of why you went there. Now, if we go to a relationship, that gets even more testy because society has made it where men are not allowed to be emotional, and that's not okay. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, I think that the fact that I have such a large male fan base to me is an amazing opportunity because men don't hear enough that they're not the bad guys all the time and that they are allowed to have emotions and that women can be manipulative too. Absolutely. That is something yeah. that does not ever get said. Uh, we talk about all of these issues pretty much exclusively from a female's point of view and from females. And I think one of the bigger goals of my show is to also get men on um, yes. it's, e it's a lot easier to get women on. I'm not going to lie guys. I've got, I've got a list of people who want to talk and things like that. They're pretty much all women. Um, that and they all want to be men anonymous. Have men have been programmed to say, oh, I am man. Nothing is wrong. I am mountain. I am strong. Yeah. And that's to be tough. To be they're getting the exact same mental, emotional, physical, if not worse than females, because they are men. Yeah. And because they and don't get the okay. treatment because it's so stigmatized, they become further abusive men. So women, exactly. if you women, if you want to help stop this, start pushing your men into feeling comfortable with talking about the things that are traumatic to them from their past and things like that. I know it's gonna be hard to get them to talk about it. That's that's when you're you're getting in those deep conversations and you're you know it's not going to be something that you're just going to talk about over dinner one night you know this is this has got to be a real thing. And this is how I've seen it happen. This is how I've seen it happen. This is how it goes in my world. They blow up because they're emotional because they've not been told emotions. They get angry first. Every they get man. Angry and yell free first. Every man that I've ever gotten to actually really talk. Um, and to start like telling me the things that were, you know, on their soul from, from childhood, they get so angry. They're so yeah. angry. Mothers hug your sons, you know, yeah. um, just, just listen, make sure they know it's okay when they cry. You know, yeah. I do not ever want to hear you say, toughen up, stop that. It's not that bad people in wherever got it worse, none of that kind of stuff, you know, like start validating your children's concerns and their pains now so that when these things happen later and they feel like something's off, they're coming to you. We got kind of off topic there. <laughs> so 
it is. It is. When we start talking about these kind of things, it just kind of keeps cascading into other things. And that's part of the problem that I've had with this show is trying to stay like kind of on that particular oh, topic, great. you know, especially when I bring in uh, other yeah, when I bring in other people and and things like that, it gets it gets kind of uh kind of crazy. Um, I do have I do have one other little uh thing in here. Okay. Let me see real quick. I'm gonna pull this up. Um. Uh. So when you're we were talking about trying to bring up the subject people who you love that you felt like were going through it. Um, now, if I was to see this occurring in a friend, anytime that they come to you, this is kind of what Christine was say saying, anytime that they come to you and they're venting about things, not to give them the answers of, oh, it'll be okay, you know, I'm sure he's just, you know, blowing off steam. Be real with your people. Stop yeah. making them just feel better and letting them move on about their day be real with your friends. Now, I understand you're not going to do this to the, the chick that you work with or whatever that you don't really have a relationship with. I understand that. That gets a little bit deep. It, it passes boundaries. But if these are people who you love, who are close to you, that you see these things happening with, it's okay to kind of step in, to be real with them, to be open. What are you, are, are you afraid you're going to hurt their feelings? That's what their lover that they're dealing with right now is doing to them every day. Right. They're going to be okay if you tell them the truth. The thing in their head that's telling them, oh, it's just me. I'm the bad guy. I'm the one who's wrong. Going to yeah. your friend, your sister, your, you know, your cousin, whatever, and being like, hey, you were telling me about some things. I've been noticing a couple of things, you know. I noticed you don't, you don't, you don't paint anymore. You know, I haven't seen, I haven't seen you post anything with your paintings lately, you know, bring those subjects up just casually, lightly. It's, oh, it's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to rip the whole thing off all at once. You know, I think where people get overwhelmed with trying to help other people is that they feel like they have to do all of it, that they have to do it all at once. Guys, sometimes yeah. it's, it's as simple as just planting the idea. Because they're going to sit on that idea. And over time, hopefully, the more of those seeds that get planted, the more something will start to grow inside them. And the more that they will realize the reality that they're living in and the more that they're going to want for themselves to do better, to do more and to, to move away from the things that are stopping them. And then boom, we got a whole free person out here doing new things, yeah. jiving, living life, you know, being being that person that they want to be. And it's a beautiful thing to see those things. Um, I've seen people make those changes at, 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 at 25. I've seen them make it at 65. No kidding. Yeah. And just walk away. Um, yeah. Is there anything about your life now and the changes that you've made with dealing with this that you would like to leave as kind of some some last words with the people that are listening today you're looking in that mirror and you're feeling the worst and the lowest is looking in that mirror and remembering you're not that what the worst you are going to be okay and you are strong enough that forcing yourself to see past what you see what other people see <laughs> And not see what's in the mirror, what you see, because it's taken this new path of mine. Well, it started like I said three years ago. I've had more progress within the last year due to me admitting one thing: if you need help, get help. I think that's. I, needed help. I think that's kind of what I wanted to lead, kind yeah, of I mean, I had a end on this. It took me many, many years to admit I needed help, and it is okay. You are not crazy. You are not sick. You just need to work through some of your problems. You need a little bit of help to do it. And I went to therapy, and it is helping tremendously. It's not all of it. That and love yourself. Love yourself. <sighs> Love yourself. yourself. It's okay. That is, that is so hard. 
and I'm still working on it. But love yourself no matter what you look like, no matter who you are, whether you are a mom with the messy bun, with the coffee cup in your hand, wearing yoga pants like I am right now, or you are a top model, love yourself because nobody might see your flaws like you see your flaws. And your flaws are okay. Can I be the mom with the coffee cup and the messy buns and the, the leggings and still be the supermodel? Because I'm kind of liking that idea. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're all supermodels and we're all superheroes. Yes. Moms are freaking superheroes. Especially now, after COVID started. Oh, yes, ma'am. We are all superheroes. Uh, we people, so people in general are superheroes right now. Are you kidding me? Like, you see what we're going through. Like, this oh, is crazy. God. Are amazing how we're adapting and growing. Uh, it worries me though that we're going through a whole pandemic and we're just expected to just kind of like keep going like nothing's happening. If you saw this park right now, just, like, just gonna throw that out there. Like, I, so you know what? We're, just a side note again, I think this is like my 50th side note. Like, we're all going through a whole, whole lot. Be super gentle with yourselves right now, okay, people? Like, Love yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My friend, my other friend told me this. I want to tell you this real quick. All right. No, no matter what, I know you've had a rough week. No matter what. Yes. Anytime you're like, oh my God, I just can't take any more. Add everything that's going on in your week and then say, and a pandemic. And then it hits. So when you're freaking out, you're stressing out, and you're having your panic attacks, or this is to everybody, the whole world, just remember it's okay. It's gonna be fun. Like, it's like exactly. Like you're literally surviving a pandemic right now. Like if yeah, you if you are fine. you it's literally breathe to today. I am so proud of you <laughs> because <laughs> I literally I'm not after having to spend a whole bunch of money to fix my heater in the middle of a pandemic in the middle of winter. That's and right. Going to walk. Yep. We're gonna just go walk. We're just gonna walk walk it out. That's right. Walk unbroken, bitches. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> I love you. I think my uh, my final notes are that really want you guys to just make sure that you're self aware, because that's what all this really comes down to is not being so blinded by what ifs and could be's and these dreams that we get sucked into because abused people tend to daydream a lot and we make up these worlds that we wish were real and we keep striving for that world in the real world and a lot of times that revolves around people and those people just aren't the people that they are in our heads. So yeah. it's very important for us to step out of yourself and I know that sounds strange but it's something that I practice quite often. It has helped me a lot and it's very difficult, but it is, it is literally changed how I live my life. I step out of myself completely. I look at myself and my situation as if I was completely detached from it. Uh, I try to take all emotion out of it and I look at what is the best decision for me. And of course, you always take in consideration your loved ones. It's just gonna happen, even if you you step out of it and things like that. But you have to also look at what those loved ones are doing to you and how they're treating you. I'm sorry, I got a lot of background noise there, so I stopped for a second. I'm you're you're good. So make sure that you're living life on your terms. Um, I think that was that was kind of where I was wrapping up at. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to take a few more calls. Uh, I have at least one other person that I wanted to talk to. Um, be setting up with that here soon. So we'll take a break and we'll be back.